Okay, we've been learning lots of rules about logs and how to combine logs and all those kinds of things. And the whole purpose of that is to be able to solve some equations with logs. Now, like I mentioned in class, the key is recognition. There are going to be two kinds of equations we're going to solve with logs. And the key is you have to look at the terms. For the one case, all, if all your terms are logs, if every term in the equation is a log term, then we're going to use one method to solve it. The second type of problem is where you have log terms plus a term that's just a number. So in other words, not all the terms are logs. So when you first look at a problem, you have to ask yourself the question, do I have all log terms or are they not all log terms? So the examples I'm going to do now are where all the terms are log terms. So we're talking about problems like this. Log base 6 of 2x minus 3 equals log base 6 of 12 minus log base 6 of 3 and let me remind you before we start solving these, and sometimes I forget also, whenever you solve an equation with logs, you have to check your solution. It is not optional. You have to check your solution because sometimes the math will give you extraneous solutions. So here's an example of all my terms are log terms. The way I go about solving these, like I said in class, is you go to both sides of the equation and you combine both sides into one log. Well, in this case, the left-hand side is already one log, so there's nothing to do on the left-hand side. But I look at the right-hand side and actually there are two logs. But now I know how to combine those into one log and since this is a subtraction, I'm just going to take 12 divided by 3, which is actually 4. Now, when you combine the logs on the left side into one log and the logs on the right side into one log, then you simply can set these arguments equal to each other. Hopefully it's very obvious by just looking. If I have the log of something over here equals the log of something over here, that's only going to be true if the arguments, if the stuff inside the logs are equal. So I could just say 2x minus 3 must equal 4. And now I solve for x. 2x equals 7. x is 7 halves. That's my proposed solution. Now if I go back and check it, let me just put the 7 halves into the second equation here. If I put 7 halves in for x, 2 times 7 halves is 7, so log base 6 of 7 minus 3, does that equal log base 6 of 4? Well, 7 minus 3 is 4. Yes, it does. There's my solution. All right, let's look at a problem like this. 2 log 3 of x equals 3 log base 3 of 5. So here, first of all, both my terms are log terms. But now I notice, right now I have one log term on each side. However, when I say one log term on each side, I don't want, we can't have any coefficients in front of the log term. So when we say one log term on each side, we mean with no coefficients. So I need to get rid of these coefficients, and we know how to do that now. They become exponents. So now, now I have two logs on each side with no coefficients, and now I can set the arguments equal to each other. In this case, the x squared is going to equal 5 cubed, which I believe is 125, and therefore x would be plus or minus square root of 125. However, 
I notice that if I use the negative and put it in my original equation, I end up trying to take the log of a negative, which I can't have. So it can't be negative. So actually, the solution is square root of 125, which I need to simplify into 5 square root of 5. Is that right? 25 times 5? Yep, yeah, 5 square root of 5. So there is how you solve that kind of problem. Once again, once you sort of get the hang of it, hopefully not too difficult. Let's look at one or two more. How about log x plus 2 minus log of x equals 2 log of 4. These are all base 10. Left hand side, let's make those into one log. So log of x plus 2 over x. The right hand side, let's get rid of the coefficient. Log of 4 squared. I didn't say it, but when I first started this problem, I noticed that all my terms are logs. So therefore, the goal was to get each side equal to one log. And now I can say, therefore, the argument x plus over x must equal 16. And if I try and solve this, so 2 is going to be equal to 15x. x is equal to 2 over 15. And actually, I'm going to check just because of time and see if I made any mistakes. And hopefully if I did not, I'm not going to check the solution. And that's correct. If you check the solution, it would check out. But I need to stop now. So, Okay, so those are examples of solving equations where all your terms are log terms. Hopefully not too difficult.